Hey everybody, welcome back to Rink's Garage. Today we got the 2003 Trailblazer in here. She's been having a little tire wear issue up front, so. I got a big box of parts from TRQ. We're gonna see if we can change out some tie rod ends, ball joints, upper control arms. Never done it before, so we'll see what happens. I got paid note here, he's gonna help. Let's get after it. <laughs> said notice a little tire wear on the trailblazer it's wearing the inside of the tires off uh, got a little bit of clunking when you hit some bumps so I haven't took anything apart and looked at it yet but looking online I found this 14 piece kit from TRQ comes with everything upper and lower ball joints upper control arms uh, all the tie rod links and sway bar links I believe so 14 pieces, it was 180 bucks. So we're just gonna throw her all in. So first thing we're gonna do, I got her up on the ramps, but we'll throw her on some jack stands and get the tires off and see what it looks like under there. Uh, I believe trailblazers are known for tie rod ends going bad and possibly upper control arm bushings. So I'm thinking that's probably what it is. These upper control arms, they just got bushing where bolts to the frame that probably guessing a little loose where the clunkin's coming from but we shall see so we'll get her on the jack stands and get the wheels off all right we got her up on jack stands got the jack under there for extra measures thing's gonna pop the wheel off there you go what size you need All right, we got the wheel off and first inspection. I can see that the front sway bar, them ones are either loose or wore. Uh, other than that, I had Payton wiggle the steering and there's a very slight amount of play in it. So that would be your tie rod ends back here, most likely. And then this upper control arm, I can't tell on the bushings on that. Seems pretty tight, but we got all the parts, so we'll start taking apart. First thing we're going to do is grab some uh, penetrating oil and spray down all the bolts we got to take off and let them sit and juice up for a little bit so they'll come apart. So we'll do that. All right, well, we got our bolts soaked down with some Seafoam Deep Creek penetrating oil. Your upper two control arm bolts, sway bar link bolts. I uh, did the threads on the tie rod end, so we'll have to crack them nuts loose. And then, what else did Payton was spraying everything down? Uh, of course, the upper control arm bolt. So, let them sit for a while. Payton's gonna rip the other tire off and do the same thing over here. And then we'll see if anything wants to come apart. So one of the things I'm going to do before we start ripping stuff apart is take a measurement on our tie rod end. I'm just going to measure from the nut on the rack side to the shoulder here. 
or inch and 15 sixteenths. That way when we get it loose and put our new one in, we can get it real close. Uh, basically we'll just measure everything, put it back together and take it to an alignment rack to have it final checked. Maybe if the drive's good, maybe not, but so I'll write that down for the left front inch and five, 15 sixteenths. And that way when we put our new one in, we can get her somewhat close, but paint has got tire off the other side. So he's going to spray down all the bolts on that side. Need a flashlight? Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right, we got everything uh, lubed up with the penetrating oil, so start taking her apart. First thing we're going to do, see if we can get this bolt off here, off the tie rod end, get him broke loose, and that is, what size is that one? Mm, 21. 21 millimeter? Yep. Boom. Now we got to see if that'll pound out of there. So we need a hammer. You want to swing the big hammer? Just like that. And I did measure both sides were inch and 15 sixteenths. So that's nice, easy to remember. So now we got our outer tie rod off. We'll see if we can crack this inner nut loose, which I believe that was a 22. They so don't have the correct uh, metric wrench for some reason. Let's see if we can throw a bigger crest wrench on it. Crack her loose. It is, uh, for some reason, this side must be a 23 millimeter and the other side's a 22. It doesn't make much sense, but. There she comes. There we go. Thought maybe we'd have to heat it up. Well, maybe it didn't come. Maybe it just rounded it off. There it came. Did it? Yeah, I see it turn. <sighs> All right. So now we can take this nut off. Be able to wind our tie rod end out. All right. Now we'll just compare this with the one we got to make sure that it's the same from here to here. So our measurement is the same. But for now, we're going to leave it off so it's out of the way. We'll pop that front sway bar link off. But first, I'm going to throw a jack under the arm just so it doesn't drop down at all. All right. So next thing we're going to do is take this bottom drag link off. And there's a nut on the back side to hold. Maybe. Okay. See what you What happened? I have no idea. Drowned it off? No. No? It doesn't look like it. Make sure you hold it on a little later. You need a different. It's not going to on. There. Need an extension, or you got it? No, it's good. You going? It's not moving. <laughs> Seen this on TikTok. Here. Let's see what happens. Now it's really round. That's unfortunate. Well, since we rounded the bolts off, plan B, cut off wheel, we're just gonna cut them off. So here goes nothing. Well, we got her cut off down there, so. Next item on the agenda is crack this top one loose and then lift the control arm off that, and then we can Tip this out of the way and we'll replace that upper control arm and see if we can replace this ball joint. Alright, see if this comes loose. That's 15 millimeter on both sides. Alright, 
happen if it didn't all come loose like that. So now we should be able to spread this open and lift this control arm off the ball valve. I got a jack under here, keep it from falling down. So there she goes. Now that's loose. We're gonna wanna probably just tie this up to the spring, keep it from falling down, and we'll see if we can get this off. Mm -hmm. All right. So now we're gonna teach Peyton a valuable lesson that will probably bust his knuckles up later in life. So I believe this is a 21 millimeter bolt up here, which neither mine nor Peyton's set has a 21. 13 16 is very close. So we got 13 16 but he needs some more leverage. So do the old, it's a muscle tour. Is it loose? It's good. I'm just, yeah. There you go. So we're we'll working on getting these loose now. These bolts are very tight on the plastic here. So I believe you gotta take the back one out and then kind of tilt it around and wiggle them in and out of there. It's not very fun, but we'll see if we can get them. You gotta wind them all loose with a wrench because you can't get any sort of socket in there. So I'll spare you the monotony. We'll see if we can get her out. All right, so get in here, Peyton. We can get this bolt out. It's very close, so you gotta actually pull the fender well back a little bit so we can slide this bolt out like that. The other side hits dead on there. So I think, I don't know if we can get this thing twisted enough to get it out from behind there because that side's a lot stiffer. This is a really stupid design. Try and get that wound out more. Of course you can't get a wrench on it once you get out so far either so. Basically pushing right on the fender well. But See if we can just not want to come out all the way. So we might have to take a wrench and bend that over a little bit. I don't know if that does the set come with those bolts or do you have to use those exact same uh, ones? I think we got to reuse the bolts, so we don't want to wreck them. We don't want to cut them. Yeah, we don't want to cut them off. But so there's a lip on here. That just does not want to go by there. Oh yeah, she's she's a tight one. So I'll probably wind this bolt back in again and see if I can bend that flare around a little bit. You can see there, the head of the bolt just hits right on it, and the bolt's not even out of shreds yet. So it's real nice. So I'll grab a. Uh, channel lock and we'll see if we can bend that lip around all right well i took my pry bar and just bent right here flared that in i think now i can hold the camera while i do this should be able to twist this enough and slide that bolt up like that um. Boom. That one's off. Saver bolts. I don't know why they made them so long, but so yeah. Basically, put a little slight bend in there and she came out. So I'm sure it'll be fun getting it back in, but we get the new one out of the package and see what happens. The other thing I was thinking about doing on here, I got the parts, is replacing the ball joints, but this upper and lower ball joint seem to be absolutely nothing wrong with them nice and tight no wiggle if you were to replace it basically there's a snap ring around the top you pop that snap ring out pound the ball joint out the other one goes in from the bottom but i think i'm just gonna let these ones ride so next thing will be new control arm so you can see here this is the old one show this properly but this bushing has quite a bit of wiggle in it. The new one 
is solid as a rock. So that should take a little bit of it out of there. And then I'm guessing the rest was just in the tie rod ends and that sway bar link making the rattling noise. So we will stick our new control arm in. We'll have to stick it in at that angle and get this side bolt in first and then swing it in and try and get the other one on. We'll see if we can get her back in there. All right. See if this guy fits up in there. Then we gotta get our bolt started back in here, which is not ideal. But Started in the hole, kind of. Now, let's see if we can swing this A arm around and get it back down on this side. She's a little tight. There we go. Tap her in place. Our bolt is not quite started enough in there, so pry bar, push her through the rest of the way. Now we're into where we should be able to get thread started. Let's see if we can get our other side in. This one should be able to just slide in from behind similarly. Because that one missed. So. Push it in a little ways. So now let's take a wrench and get this one started enough so we can get the pliers or whatever you got. Get him wound up enough we can get the wrench back on it. That guy started and then try and do the same on this side. He's kind of hold your fender rail all the way. Spin it by hand. So now we'll be able to get our wrenches back on and Wind them in and tighten it up and then we'll throw the upper ball joint back on. All right, now we got our top two bolts back in and snugged up after struggling. Now it's time to throw this upper control arm back on the ball valve so I can cut my zip tie I got holding her up. And we want to lift him up. Line up our ball joint. Get her started on there. And I'll probably take my punch and just spread this guy back out a little bit. Maybe. There we go. And we should be able to tap it back down on there. You need to spread it out. And then throw our bolt back in like so. And then, uh, so when you tighten this up, that just squeezes, and then the bolt sticks in the slot in the ball joint. So. Tighten your back up. 
and my wrench. Torque that properly. Three oogadoogas. And then I gotta pull my little plastic clip off the other arm so I can fasten this back up. And then we can start putting stuff back together. We'll put that sway bar link on next. So now, throw our sway bar link back in, which is fairly simple. We'll just stick her through and then you can manipulate your joint part of it to get them started. And of course, we'll spin the nuts on. And tighten them down. All right, we got our sway bar link tightened down. Upper control arm is tightened. Next, finish up the tie rod. So, on the tie rod, we do have a boot. There's another piece inside here we're gonna change out. So we need to take this boot off, which is just a, a hose clamp on it. And then it's just slid on on the inside and we should be able to Try that loose and slide it off. Cracker loose on here. Like that. And this piece actually winds off the rack, so a little grease cap on the back side slide him off and it's got two square spots there to get on there well it's not the most ideal spot so I make a little tool which is just basically like a muffler clamp with a 3 a square in it to put your ratchet or breaker bar in all right so this tool just slides on and we'll just tighten her down but now let's stick our breaker bar in let's see if we can crack this guy loose Once you got her loose, you can see all free. I don't feel a lot of slop in there, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's not bad. Take our tool off. like that then we'll want to take our one we took off and our new one and just compare the lengths and make sure they are the same and they do look exactly the same so your new inner is going to come well most of them will with a little thread lock to put on so we'll dab a little of that on the threads before we wind it back in Wind that in. And then we'll put our tool back on and tighten her down. Now we can put 
torque came on. Tool back off. Slide our cover back out over the top. I'm guessing that's just trying to hold grease in there. Not sure. Now we're ready for a new tie rod. So we'll take the new tie rod for this side. Wind are jamming it all the way on. And I did uh, hold this up to the old tie rod and they do measure exactly the same also. We should be able to take our inch and 15 sixteenths measurement and set that up. Winder. See how much stiffer these this new tie rod end is. Inner tie rod. So basically we'll wind him in. Oh by the way. Don't forget your boot. Luckily I didn't have it wound in too far. So the sticker boot back over it. Make sure she's all the way on on the inside. And then we can slide him out there. Our hose clamp back on. Right. We got the tape measure and we'll throw a measurement on it, see where we're at. Actually in a little bit too far. Right about there, I believe. We'll call that good. Like I said, we'll have to Take it somewhere and get it aligned on a rack just to make sure. But now, I'll stick the other end of the tie rod in. And I won't tighten that quite yet. I'm going to get both sides done and then we'll throw a quick tape measure measurement on the wheels just to make sure it's somewhat close. All right, so now we can stick our tie rod end back in. Get everything lined up here. Start our nut on top. Tighten it out. And this one. This has a cotter pin that we got to put in there. And we'll just leave this back jam nut loose for now. And we'll do a little uh, tape measure alignment just to get it close. And then, of course, we'll have to get it taken to town and have somebody throw around an alignment rack. So we'll stick the cotter key in here. And then it'll be time to move on to the other side. So. I'll stick that cotter key in and then we'll whip through the other side and then when we get done with that I'll show you the little tape measure alignment trick or we'll see what the ball joints look on that side if if them ones that side's worse we may end up replacing them but we'll do a little time lapse of the other side and see you at the end.
right, well, we got the other side all back together. Same as the other side, ball joints seem to be just fine. So I'll just throw them in the drawer. But next thing we gotta do is button up the alignment a bit. It should be close from measuring, but what we do now is just get it back on the ramps, put the weight on it, and then we'll do a quick tape measure check on the tires. So show you how to do that. But first I'll get the wheels thrown back on and get her back on the ramps. Oh, one other thing. This side, these upper control arm bolts, this one does not have that lip. So this one came right out, no problem. Not near as ugly as the other side. Everything else came apart good. I only had to cut one of these bolts off. And there was some previous grinder marks, so I'm guessing them links have been changed once before, but. Anyway, I'll get the tires and wheels on and we'll see if we can align her. All right, we got her down on the ramps again and now I'm gonna show you my uh, redneck alignment. So, I got a couple pieces of angle iron. Just got them zip tied to the wheel, even across the wheel. I do have them angled kind of what the car is because I'm gonna leave it up on the ramp so I can get underneath. But all I did was found center line, use a square, Get it in the center of the rim so it's the same on each end on both sides and then i ran a string line from dead center on the tire in the front all the way to the back tied it off straight and as you can see we have an alignment alignment issue so i measured it it's about on the end of the angles it's about seven inches difference so we need to turn the tire rods out get this wheel to line up so what i'm going to do First thing, make sure the wheel's straight, which is pretty close. And I'm going to go under and I'm going to wind this tie rod out until this wheel touches that line. And then we'll look and make sure it's just touching. So then we know it's in line with the back wheel. So we'll do that first. And then we'll adjust our toe in on this side. So crawl under there and we'll start winding her out. So... All I'm gonna do is get my jam nut loose and start backing this off and that's gonna push the wheel out. We'll go a ways and double check it. As you can see, as I turn this, you see that wheel coming out. This gap is getting smaller. Get her up close and then we'll recheck the wheel. Double check our steering wheel, make sure that's not moving, which it did. So we'll straighten that back out. Right about there. So we are getting close. I'm about a sixteenth away on the back tire, so. We'll turn her a little more. Not sure how it was so far off, but something might have been a little different. Quarter inch there. Just barely missing back there. So I think I'm going to go Two more turns, then we'll throw the jack under it, lift it up off the ramp, just to get any side pressure off it. We'll check her one more time. Throw the jack under the front, just lift it up for a short bit of time. Take the flex out of the rubber, then I'll just let it back down and we'll check it.
one last time. Right there is pretty straight. We're just touching out there. Just touching, maybe a little bit towed in right there. So I think we're going to leave her there. Now we'll go over to the other side. All right, so now I'm going to do is measure across the front of these angle irons. See where we're at. We are 74, 7 eighths in the front. Seventy-two and a sixteenth. So seventy-four and seven eighths, seventy-two and a sixteenth. So we're roughly three inches out of alignment. So we want to go this way. So I'll adjust this one out. When we get done, we want to have the wheels towed in about a sixteenth of an inch is all at the front of the tire. So. Probably about a 30 second out on the end of that. So. Check my steering wheel again and I'm going to jack this side up and just take some pressure off that ramp. Reset it. Ideally, you guys should have a couple metal plates with grease in them so you can turn the wheel and it spins freely. I think that's close enough for me so we're about two foot long it's roughly halfway so eighth out there is going to be pretty close to a sixteenth at the wheel which is going to get us close enough all we got left is tighten up them jam nuts so i'll get that done and we'll take this stuff off and i suppose we'll have to take her for a test drive and make sure she doesn't just pull right in the ditch so get this stuff off and we'll go for a drive all right, we're gonna back her out of the garage. See what happens. on the road see if she pulls one way or the other if the wheel's straight and by no means is this alignment perfect it's just to get you by to get you to the alignment rack in town or maybe not we'll see Get her 
create and see what happens here. Definitely not horrible other than my steering wheel is not perfect. Oh well. What do you think, Peyton? Good enough for now? Yeah. So, we'll see how she goes and take her into somewhere and get her aligned most likely so she don't wear the tires off, but it actually doesn't feel too bad. So, we'll cruise her back home see what happens hopefully we make it oh we made her back back in the shop on the ramps again I'm gonna crawl under and just adjust some tie rods get my steering wheel a little straighter so steering wheel was kind of pointing to the left going down the road so straighten it out we're turning the wheels to the right so all I'm gonna do is go under shorten this tie rod one full turn lengthen the other rod one full turn so that should adjust our steering wheel a little bit. See how it is. We can always pull back in and go more if we need to. But other than that, she drives ice is definitely tighter than it was. So we got rid of some of the slop. Uh, I don't know. I didn't see anything real obvious as to why it was so out of alignment before. Uh, we'll have to see if we get a little another shot of snow or something where they get some ice on the road. I, I can tell because like I said before, it was if you had one wheel on ice and another on dry tire, as soon as you hit it, it would just jerk you to the left or right, depending on which wheel you hit it with. So we'll see how she goes. And then when I was all done adjusting, I remeasured where we had inch and 15 sixteenths before. Now we have two and a sixteenth on each side. So something with our reman tie rods, a little different length. They're just the I don't know, something was a little bit different, but I think she's going to be fine, so that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.